Katjurahan, the town with a World Heritage Site of Hindu and Jain temples. Early in the morning we were driven from Orca to Kajurahu. Checked into our hotel and immediately headed to the Western Temple site. After viewing the temples there, we travelled on to see the Jain temples at the eastern side before returning to our hotel. Next morning, we visited an old town area of Kajuraho before driving to Satna and taking the sleeper train to Varanasi. We set off early from Orcha. The sounding of horns is incessant. Soon we're crossing the Betwa River and are heading east towards Kajuraho. Plastic rubbish lines the highway. After about four hours, we reach our hotel in Kajuraho. We check in and then go to the western group of temples. The temples in Kajuraho were built in the 10th and 11th century during the rule of the Chandela dynasty and were actively used until the 13th century when the area fell under Muslim rule. From the 13th to 18th century they were lost to forest cover and were rediscovered by the British surveyor T.S. Burt in the 1830s. Originally there were over 80 temples, about 20 of which remain. Different temples are dedicated to different Hindu deities. All temples, apart from one, point east. The largest, Kandaraya Mahadeva, shows the typical layout. There are four spires from east to west and these respectively cover the entrance porch, the hall, the great hall and the shrine. The most striking feature of these thousand year old temples is the magnificent artwork. This one alone has over 800 figures displaying everyday life and the deities. The god Ganesh. The elephant's eyes pop as they bear the weight of the building. About 10% of the artwork is erotic, celebrating a whole range of sexual acts. They tell stories. Here, the men are enjoying their women. Now it's off to war. Where some relieve their sexual frustration. And the gods look on. The exquisite artwork is continued inside the temple, reaching into the darkest recesses, the shrine, the small Vihara temple with its raw incarnation of Vishnu. Again, the carving is exquisite. It dates to about 900 AD. The Devi Jagadambi temple, dedicated to Parvati, the goddess of fertility. The shrine. More beautiful stone carving. This one is only 160 years old, built by the Maharaja. 
has three different domes to represent the three local religions. We take one last look at the western site and head for the eastern site and the Jain temples. The Adinath temple with its three rows of detailed sculptures. The larger Parshvanatha temple is similarly decorated. The third Jain temple, Shantinatha, is enclosed in a 19th century renovation. Next morning, our guide shows a traditional Indian town life. This area, beside a lake, contains many old houses. Animals and people intermingle. Amenities are basic and some housing is in disrepair. Candle niches and street lighting. And that's this place where we used to put land. Cow dung on doorsteps for insect repelling. Part of an old temple. Dung fuel drying. Shiva. A shrine to Shiva. A vegetable cellar. The town is divided by castes. Here we leave the third caste area and go to the second. And now to the upper Brahmin caste area. <laughs> the veg seller again. More dung and doorstep and modern electrical amenities. We head back to the car and are soon speeding along. Saturn and the railway station. Unlike our previous train, this one was two hours late and so we had plenty of time for people watching. animal watching and train watching at the station. Eventually it arrived. And we found our berth. There was no food available, but our fellow travellers kindly shared theirs with us. Time for some rest. We finally arrived in Varanasi, five hours late. 